Hello and welcome to Meow Mix. My name is Jerry. As you can guess, Stephen is not here by him not being on the podcast. Uh, unfortunately, the children are covered in germ struck again. He is not well. Uh, and then next week, I believe he is out of town, so I'll be rolling solo next week as well. I'll probably be recording live on Wednesday, then that way I can have a co-host in you, the fans. It'll be at 8.30. Most likely, I'll set up something so you can go on. And this podcast is going to be a little bit different than our normal weekday type of podcast where we preview the game mostly because it's not fun right now to do a preview game because we're gonna get smacked but i will touch on the game and stuff like that go over the news and the big thing i want to talk about is is this defense even fixable i mean there there's not there's not much i mean can evero even do anything with what's going on but first, let's look at the news. Uh, Marquise Haynes, Annie, and Thomas were added to the active roster last week on Saturday, right before the game. Uh, Marquise Haynes played a good bit, so did Ian Thomas. I expect Marquise Haynes to actually play a lot more, uh, sticking with that awful defense. I mean, at least he's shown some ability, so I assume he's going to get more than the seven snaps he got last week. Uh, and Jonathan Brooks started practice after his ACL injury in college. First time in a Panther uniform. He's making some cuts. He's looking good. Uh, not on the active roster. I believe they have 21 days after they initiate him to practice to come on it. So I assume probably next week he'll probably be on the active roster. And they'll pro I hope the way Chuba's running, you bring him on slowly. There's no need to rush. This team's not going to the playoffs. Make sure he's fully healthy. Make sure that ACL is healed and going good because Chuba's running well. There's no need to rush him back. He's the future. That's That was the plan of drafting him in the second round. Is This is, this is his redshirt year. Don't rush him back. Get him fully healthy. And then... When he is fully healthy, having him and Chuba back there towards the end of the season is going to be fun to watch. A lot more than Sanders and Chuba because Sanders just isn't doing anything. I don't know. I, I don't know if he just got that contract and just doesn't care. I mean, the O-line is now blocking great, so I, I don't know. Chuba's showing that you can run behind this line. He's averaging five yards per carry, so why are you averaging three? I mean, I don't have the numbers, but I feel that's about right. Um, so, I, I don't know. But, let's jump into it now. The Panthers' defense is atrocious. They are last in points per game, giving up 33.8. The next worst team is Jacksonville at 29.7. We're four points. We're giving up four more points a game than the second worst team. That's insane. I mean, Carolina, there's their team sack percentage, 31 in the league. 31 in the league. Only Atlanta is worse. And that's that's saying something that we couldn't get home against Atlanta last week. Just no one. Nothing. Jadavion Clowney, nothing. And I'm going to get into him here in a little bit. But, I mean, there's absolutely... No pass rush on this team. Um, and I will go over who has the sack leaders on this team. And let's go over that real quick. Um, the, I don't have that pulled up, but the sack leaders is, I think Jake Peavy has one or two. Uh, let's see here. Receiving defensive sacks. For the season, our biggest sack Producer is Jaden Lee PV, defensive end with one and a half. Then we have LeBrian Ray, one. Jatavion Clowney with one. Charles Harris with one. Iku Leota, who's not even on the team anymore, one. And he got that in the first game and they got released. Why not bring him back? I mean, he might be on the practice squad. I don't know. I'm not keeping track of that too much right now because uh, our depth is practice squad, so... Oh, no, he's with uh, Pittsburgh. 
because that makes sense. Because I don't understand that. DJ Johnson, third round pick that they traded up for, is has a half a sack. That just wow. No one else on this team. No linebacker. Charles Harris was the only linebacker. Uh, DJ Johnson in that half. I mean, just nobody. Nobody. And now let's look at the PFF grades for that. For just the pass rush. I know I have that here. Our top pass rusher, according to PFF, Claudin Trellis, our, our linebacker. He has had four pass rushes. Four. And he's the best pass rusher we have with a 76 grade, which is all right, but I mean, eh. Then Jaden Peavy. Again, Jaden Peavy, I, seriously, he's a defensive interior guy. Like, he's labeled defensive end, but he runs that 3-4 defensive end, not, not an edge rusher. Just, and then from there, it goes TJ Smith, who had 18 pass rushers. Mike Jackson, one. Deshaun Williams. I mean, and now we're in the 50s. And 50s isn't good. 50s, 50s is bad. Especially for any starting potential. I mean, this is just abysmal, abysmal pass rush. I mean, Jatavion Clowney's pass rush PFF grade out of 97 pass rushes, 53.4. Ashawn Robinson with pass rushing defensive interior is 56, is better than him. He has had more pass rush than anybody on this team. Is it time Evro takes a look in the mirror and says, hey, this defense may not have the talent to get home with just sending up my core players my and keep my, my umbrella scheme, keep everything in front of us? Maybe we need to start blitzing more. Hopefully, he looks at this and kind of does. Because right now, I, I like him. I like him as a coach. I think he's a good guy. I think he's a good coach. But you got to show something on this defense to keep yourself around. I mean, I know that they they took a lot of your good players to get Robert Hunt and Damian Liz, which the O-line is paying off in that respect. But once those injuries to Derek Brown and Shaq Thompson and Josie Jewell hit, there is nothing on this defense. Nothing. Able to get anything of pass rush. Pass rush was already in the offseason. We knew this was going to be the big weakness. And they didn't address it strong enough. They went and got Jatavion Clowney. Which I applauded at the time. Uh, you know, I had a good season. And I understood why they went that route. DJ Wadham, uh still hasn't played. They They paid him good money to come here. And he hasn't played. So let's check on his injury report right now. Because he should be coming back. Oh no, injury not ready to practice four days ago. I mean, he's go working through complications. I mean, that was a horrible signing. Horrible signing. Just... I have no clue as what what Evero's going to do. He has to come up with a scheme that that rattles a quarterback. Because our secondary, they've done well. I mean, I'm not going to knock them say that they're great, but they've done well. I think J.C. Horn has played all right. I he hasn't been the lockdown corner that I that I was expecting this season, but it's also a lot of miscommunication in the secondary between him and the safety. Uh, Nick Scott, I think, was a bad move. Honestly, he he seems kind of lost out there. Xavier Woods is good, solid, but I just I don't know. They need they need to somehow orchestrate some sort of semblance of a pass rush. You cannot hit the quarterback one or two times a game, and that's it. You you can't you can't survive that way in this current NFL. And now let's flip to the other side of the defense, the run defense. Because, you know, I'm just talking about pass rush. Oh, no, no, no. 
it's more than that is the problem with this defense. The run defense is horrible. They are 30th in the league, giving up 153 yards per game. And as a team that doesn't typically, you know, lead, that is abysmal. You know they're going to run, and you still can't stop them. 153 yards. So, I, I just, this is the worst I've ever felt about a Panthers defense. I mean, it's just just crazy to me how pathetic they look on defense. Uh, they're giving up 4.7 yards per carry. So when you know they're going to run the ball, they are still getting 4.7 yards per carry. And a lot of that goes back to those guys that are missing. I know Derek Brown was a godsend in a way for this defense because he was. He was getting those tackles for losses. He was he had 100 tackles last year. Right? Well, with his injury this year, he's just not going to be able, he's no one can reproduce that, you know, that production he has. But worse than that, no one's coming close to helping that production. It's just man, oh man, like what what can this team do? And then you're like I just feel bad. I feel bad for watching this team. Now, this is our current nickel personnel type of lineup, or we'll go to base here, actually. So we have Mike Jackson and J.C. Horn on the outside with Nick Scott and Xavier Woods in the secondary. Then listen to this. Shy Tuttle in the middle, okay, as a nose tackle. LeBray Ray at left end. And Deshaun Williams on right end. If you ask most Panther fans, they would not know those two names at all. And they're not good. According, I mean, looking at their PFFs, they are not good. Uh, linebacker. We have Charles Harris, who we've already ripped multiple times on this podcast after games. As he just, he looks lost out there. Uh, then we have Jadavion Clowney who was our big signing for the linebacker of pass rush. He's ranked 82nd out of 108 edge rushers in the league right now. Trevin Wallace, I mean, he's not an edge rusher. He's played all right for a raw rookie, but still not good. Not good enough. I mean, what are you going to... I mean, he's flashing every once in a while. And then Wooten. I don't even know who Wooten is off the top of my head. Chandler Wooten, who has a PFF grade of 27, is is penciled in, in our, as our starter this week. I mean, I, it, what can Evero do to make this defense at least be competitive to keep this within a game? So that this defense, so so the offense can produce some points and actually have a chance. I mean, the Panthers have not been god awful on offense like they were the years previous. So it's just tough to see. Um, the pa Panthers are currently averaging, I mean, seventeen points a game. Uh, the last last three they have eighteen. So yeah, it's still felt like we had. 20 points just last week but I don't know I thought the offense was doing better than it actually is either way I mean the defense needs to put up a stop you can't let them score on every drive or force one or two punts a game that's too much to ask on your offense especially when it's still being being assembled I mean let's be honest we have Andy Dalton back there we don't have Patrick Mahomes to make up for this it's just so i i don't know what the deal is with this team i does evero need to bring the rush more does he need to focus the guys on stopping the run like i i just don't know where where, where he goes because i'm like looking at this roster on defense and it's just bad uh god I, I 
I don't know. If anybody has any any help, I, I think Marquise Haynes is going to have to be... I can't believe I'm saying this as I thought he should have been gone a long time ago. Marquise Haynes needs to step up. <laughs> uh, we want Marquise Haynes, who's been in this league since 2018, who's been in and off this practice squad. I, I, I'm hoping he is the guy to come in and at least do something. Because no one else is. No one else is. I just... And if Evero can't make this team at least better, maybe not the worst defense in the league, then maybe, maybe there's some hope. But right now, there's just not. I mean, I've never had, I've never watched a Panthers defense look so bad. And a couple weeks ago, I was asked after the game about Evero keeping his job. If he if he can't turn things around, I'm not asking for a top 10 defense. I'm saying you have to make the defense not give up 35 points a game. If you could start holding to a team's to 20 points and giving your offense at least a, a shot, and then you might be gone. And someone else is going to snap him up and give him good pieces. And then we're going to be look like fools. Just like we did with Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold. Uh, the, just over and over again, guys are producing. Uh, l- letting Frankie Louvu walk. Yes, he, he turned down the Panthers' offer to go to Washington. But he's bad-mouthing you because of the way your fr- franchise has been run. Of course. Jeremy Chin. Jeremy Chin is third leading tackler in Washington right now on a good defense. I, I mean, well, let's look. Frankie Louvu has three sacks. I mean, I think that's the total sacks we have all together. Jeremy Chin has 31 tackles and one tackle for loss. These are, these are the guys that walked because they didn't want to be here. And that's partly on Evero because he wasn't scheming them up right. Frankie Louvu left in part because he wanted to rush the passer more. Guess what we need this year? More pass rush. Guess who's not here? Frankie Louvu. Why is that? Because Evero, Evero wanted to keep him back. Evero wanted him to stop the run and play coverage more. And Frankie Louvu wanted the stats. So, he has, Evero needs to come up with an idea. Come up with something to come and, uh, to basically be better. I mean, God. Because I, I, we all know Dave Canales is gone. But if this team goes 1-16... And is giving up 30 points per game. There's there's no one. No one's going to bat an eye if they fire the defensive coordinator. Just, just realistically, it's just what it is. I, it just... It, it, it breaks my Panthers' heart that the defense is this bad. <sighs> All right, I... I have ranted a little bit. Uh, I am going to quickly go over the Panthers and Washington Commanders games. That is on Sunday at 4.05. Um, Starting off, we always tend to talk about uh, gambling. uh, Going gambling for the children. So let's start it off here. Uh, Panthers are nine point underdogs. The over under is 51 and a half. Honestly, I don't like either one of those because I could see the Panthers losing by more or if something magical happens, kind of keeping it a little bit close, but I mean, still nine points is a lot. And 51 and a half, I expect Washington to score 33. So you're asking our offense to get 18. I I just don't know. I don't know on this team, this team if they can get it. 
Because Washington has a good defense. They do. Bobby Wagner in the middle. Like, uh, we've already mentioned Frankie Louvu, Jeremy Chin, who's playing big parts in that defense. So, I don't like those. So, what I was looking at is Chuba Hubbard rushing and receiving. That seems to be our moneymaker this year. Unfortunately, people are starting to catch on, especially betting-wise. And now it's up to plus 100 at negative 105. Uh, 125 is plus 255. That's just, I, I, this defense is good, and they know that Chuba's going to get the ball. So I am going to bet on Jaden Daniels' rushing yards. He is averaging 50 yards per game, and I think with this Carolina team, he's going to get more than that. I went with 60-plus rushing yards for Jaden Daniels because I could see our pass rush not getting home, Daniel's having time. Our coverage is decent, and he scurries for a 30, 40-yard play. I could see it. He's fast. He's a mobile quarterback. That's that's what they do good. So I put $10 on that. Hopefully, we'll make a little bit of money for the children. Now, moving on to the injury report. I will be right back. I am going to pause this for a second so I can take a sip of water before I read out this crazy long list all right thank you for taking that quick break uh got some water there injury report <clears throat> all right starting off claudish chair is out josie jewel out taylor moton out deontay johnson questionable john radikin uh out a sean robinson out jonathan brooks out he must be on the active roster now already jatavion Clowney, doubtful uh, David Moore, questionable. LeBre Ray, questionable. Um, we have a couple guys that are full practices and don't have designations. Uh, Andrew Rame, Nick Scott, uh, Icky, uh, Marquise Haynes, and Ian Thomas. And then we'll go back to the questionables and Tommy Trimble. Dane Jackson, full practice questionable. That might be interesting. Um... And then we have Jaden Crumedy, uh, doubtful, and Sam Franklin Jr., doubtful. Yoshu, Yosh Nijman, the uh, swing tackle backup, uh, questionable. That's just the Panthers. I, I don't know how long that took me to say it all, but man, you could you could fill out. A roster with those and it's most on defense it's just it's crazy now looking at washington we have dorance armstrong uh did not practice on wednesday or thursday these are thursday practices because they haven't released their questionables doubtfuls and outs tyler owens uh shen limited practice nick allegretti guard limited practice noah brown groin full practice percy butler full practice Cleland Farrell, uh, knee, limited practice. Frankie Louvu, rest. So he didn't pr practice, but he'll probably play. He's probably going to have a heck of a game against us, let's be honest. Quan Martin, cornerback, limited practice. Darren Payne, nose tackle, full practice. Brian Robinson, running back, limited practice. Emmanuel Forbes, cornerback, full practice. Jordan McGee, full practice. Bobby Wagner, middle linebacker, uh, he had a rest. Good for him. Uh, Tyler Badiz, thumb, limited practice. And I, they have some injuries over there, too. So. <sighs> ah, whew. Long, long, long injury list for th already in the season. It's not even mid-season yet, and we have all that. Now, if there's any keys to the victory... I'm just saying, let's keep this game close. I'm not even asking for a win. I, I, I know that's just way too crazy to think about, is a win. But a key to a victory is the same thing we keep saying. Run the ball, keep it out of Washington's hands. Run the ball with Chuba. Run it more. I don't want to see him with 13 touches. If I see him with 23 rushes, I'll be happy. I want him closer to 30. I don't want you to 
force Andy Dalton to throw the ball. Because let's drain the clock. Let's let's have something. Because right now we have nothing. Uh, you know, and th- Washington's a good sacking team. They aver- they have they're fifth ranked in sack win percentage at eight point nine five. So in last three games, 14.44. So they're coming on strong now. So you don't want to set Andy Dalton out there. Andy Dalton's not the greatest quarterback in the league. Let's let's be honest. Now, Washington does give up 137 yards on the ground. That's why I say run the dang ball. Run it, run it more. Look, not only that, us fans don't have to watch it. Long, long game of us getting of the Panthers getting trounced. No one, no one wants to continue to watch a thirty-two-seven game in the fourth quarter. If you run the ball, at least I could get it done earlier. Come on! But yes, run the ball, take care of the ball, um, and that that's kind of my second point. Cause turnovers. Let's let's flip the script here. All right, if you can't stop them, at least get a turnover or so. That's what we need. You know, let's... I, and reverse side here. Andy Dalton, Chuba Hubbard, hold on to the ball. Let's not make mistakes. You know, let, let's play to our strengths. Let's just slow the clock down. Let's run the ball. Take care of the ball. Maybe our defense could get a turnover. I mean, honestly, it's secondary. You see a ball, go, go try to steal it. Because we're, we're not stopping them any other way. You might as well at least try to st- get a turnover. Not gonna harm us. We're still gonna lo- uh, like. We're still losing. So, that is my second key to the game. And my third key to the game is, God, just just play better football. Panther fans want better football. It it, it I, that's what we want. We haven't had good football since two thousand and. 17 since since david Te- well no steve wilkes had some good football steve wilkes coached some good football something this team hasn't seen since or much before that so and those are the keys to the game i mean my prediction for this game i i already said kind of hinted at it washington wins 33 to 17 I know, it's it's a crazy crazy thought, but thirty three to seventeen. My my bold prediction, I, I really don't have one. I I don't see any Panthers going off. I don't see any Panthers having a standout game in this one. This this feels like Washington's an up and coming good team. Jaden Daniels looks awesome. I mean, and their defense is playing awesome or well. It's just, it's th- there's just not much for a Panthers fan to really watch. And honestly, if you're a Panthers fan and don't watch this game, I don't blame you. Just listen to the recap. It'll probably be me crying. Hey, it's okay. <laughs> it is what it is. As a Panther fan, all we could do is uh, cry. Cry blue tears because we know it's not going to turn around anytime soon. Uh, oh, yeah. My last key to the game. David Tepper, can you please put grass on the Panther Stadium? Look at all those injuries I just said. It's A lot of those are knees and ankles. And guess what? The faux grass turf it is a culprit of a lot of those. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of these injuries could be avoided by having grass. The players hate the turf. They hate it. They've they've begged you to change it. Saving yourself one or two million dollars per year on turf over grass, but look, you, good. But you, look what you already lost because of it. You lost Christian McCaffrey multiple times due to that turf. And you're pay- you were paying him $10 million, $11 million a year. I mean, Derek Brown, I mean, that could have been a turf issue. How much are you paying him per year? 
I mean, is it really worth that savings to give your fans and your team a worse product to save a million dollars? And because you're you're paying these guys either way now. So I, I don't know. But that that's I just had to call that out. That's one of my key things that I really wish David Tepper would do besides, you know, not making any personnel decisions, but you know, whatever. All right. I think that's going to do it for the solo podcast. Um, if you like it, let me know. Uh, I will try to come up with a better format, especially when I go live next Wednesday. Um, I plan on being live after the game as well. Uh, if Steven is feeling better, he will join me. If not, it will be another solo podcast, and I will hope to have our our friends on YouTube afterwards that help help guide the show. So we want to thank everyone for listening. If you like the show, please let your friends know. Please follow us on Twitter at Meow Mix Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at mailbag at meowmixpodcast.com. If you leave us a five-star review with a comment on Apple Podcasts, we'll read it on the show. I haven't checked that lately. I need to. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. And like I said, I will be back after the game on Sunday, um, probably pretty late. I will go live on Facebook or on YouTube, so please catch that. Uh, Join us. And other than that, stay safe out there and keep... Pounding. <laughs>